there is something in the northern hemisphere about it's the time when the days are shorter and cooler or colder. And so there's a way that, that it's easy to kind of curl in a little bit and be reflective. You know, the late night sun isn't calling us out. And so there's a way that I really love that time of year when I get to kind of take stock of how things have gone, of what's important to me, of what I haven't caught in myself over the course of the last months or year, and kind of apply a, a gentle gaze at myself along with a kind of a energized, let's see, what have I not been paying attention to? What do I really want to make happen for me as the light starts changing? So one of the frames in NBC that is the most important to me is that of being conscious of our choices, of really being able to notice that I'm making a choice in every moment. I'm making choices about what to do and say, but I'm also making choices about how to be with me with whatever it is that I've done or said. And yet when I look at kind of goals and intentions, at least in the old school way of like, it's New Year's resolution time, that I often felt like I wasn't really using the full extent of making conscious choice about how I was with my choices and how I was with myself and the choices I've made. So I want to start off by having you think, how have you... If you've also had Jackal Corral nipping at your heels when you've made resolutions, how have you ever suffered with what thoughts, with what feelings, with what kind of patterns and behaviors? How have you suffered when you've made resolutions and then not gone as far with them as you wanted? I really used to be amazed at how the pattern would play, that I would set a resolution It was done, you know, in old school many years ago. It was done with the real amazing hard should, you know, you should really do this in order to be a good parent, in order to be an evolved person, whatever little idea I had about it. And either I would judge myself as a fail, you know, like a giant stamp with red letters, you know, when I would miss connecting with my resolution or intention, or I would forget. And then, you know, sometime later I'd say, oh, what is wrong with me? And then I would play that core belief for days, weeks, sometimes longer than that with a good dose of disappointment, just like that real discouragement, disappointment cocktail that would hang out with me for a long time. So if you want to just remember, if you've ever run into self-criticism at perceived failure or shame, if you've had a shame spiral from it, especially, you know, with resolutions, we sometimes tell people about them. If we haven't caught on to the, the fact that this is going to really fuel the jackal show, we tell people about them. And then we have to reckon with that when they say, oh, I thought you were going to stop smoking or lose 15 pounds or whatever the thing was. So I want to suggest support for mourning fully. That when we set some kind of an intention, whether it's resolution style with the good should flavor, or setting an actual intention that when we miss our chance to live up to our idea, that we really need a chance to have support for mourning fully for remembering what we dreamed about, why we loved the idea of doing something, what was behind it, and letting ourselves, with some other loving eyes, hopefully, mourn that something else distracted us, pulled our attention, that we got involved in something, that maybe we were low-resourced and overwhelmed, and that we, we slipped from having our eyes stay on that prize. And just saying that, I slow down a little bit. I notice that my voice slows. And then I feel like I become a little bit more present to myself. Instead of being run by an external idea of what should happen, that I slow down and I find some warm compassion that kind of slips in. So I want to invite everybody to think about one place in your body that you might realize that you want to set some kind of an intention about. One that's related to a relationship that's kind of close in. 
some intention that you would want to set, and one related to the wider, larger world where you want to contribute to an issue that doesn't just apply to me and mine, but goes out farther. I think one of the biggest shifts in terms of social change, social justice, and contribution in the world is that I want to think of me and mine as much, much larger, ever growing. Because if I just think that mine is me and my daughter, then the kinds of things that I'm willing to reach for, willing to take leadership about, willing to kind of reach myself to be active, reaching, no action too small. If I think of me and mine as ever increasing, then that changes my relationship to the world. It changes how big my focus is. So I want you to think about for a moment, if you've got paper, you can write them down because otherwise we forget them, but not too crafty yet, but just some kind of thing. First thought about some kind of intention that you realize that you'd kind of like to set for yourself that has to do with your body, one to close in relations, and one related to the wider, larger world. And even while you're writing, if you choose to do that, I want you to notice how you feel in your body and what kind of emotional territory, what kind of landscape you're in. I want to invite you to go slowly, not to get the right answer, but instead to just notice, huh, what comes up? Do I freeze? Do I notice that I can't think of anything? Or do I notice that I can think of 30 things and so they all rush into the doorway at the same time, making it hard to get through? There's three levels. One intention related to the body, one related to a close-in relationship, and one related to some contribution to an issue in the wider, larger world that stretches me and mine out further so I get to claim a part of it even if it doesn't affect me and members of my immediate circle and first especially because I've encouraged you to do this in a in a slow reach and noticing how you feel in your body and emotion about it I want to ask the meta level question what did anybody notice about how you are as I ask the questions or as you try to answer (music) 